It's time to make the donuts. Oh man, this thing's heavy. I mean, this, this is really heavy. Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here, your online art professor. Doing my thing this week, we are making a dozen donuts. So this is the Dirty Dozen. Today's project is completely inspired by the Great Pottery Throwdown. It's on, it comes on BBC, I think it's on HBO Max. For those of you who can't watch it, this is why I'm making this kind of series piece here. I'm doing a summer ceramic series, and it's really to support those of us who can't watch something like the Great Pottery Throwdown, and I've got a camera, I've got some time, let's make some videos. What I I had this idea of like throwing the donut. I was watching the video that I shot a couple weeks back and uh, and going through it, and I'm like, you know what? Let's let's elevate that up. Let's turn that into a full blown project. So, but I had to give myself another bit of a challenge. So not only was I throwing the donut shapes, and I was definitely going to decorate them. I also want to give myself a time limit. So. I'm doing the Dirty Dozen here in one hour flat. Now, before people start coming at me in the comments, let's go ahead and break that down. I am putting on the timer of the time that I'm actually working. Now, yes, you could say that you, people who wedge clay or if you're having to move things around, uh, that should still count in the time, and I agree with you, but I'm also a one-man camera crew, so I gotta move the camera around for different shots. I can't just have this big wide shot because you guys won't see the details. So the whole time that i'm working it is within that hour specified time and i'm not exceeding that at all except at the end when i just put a little couple extra dots of slip to do the decor I, it's it's fine it's fine now for this project here i've got a i have a pug mill and i freshly pugged this batch of clay about a week ago so this is still good solid fresh clay out of the bag out of a pug mill that de-aerates my clay so before anybody says why don't you wedge the clay that's why it comes out of a pug mill I, it's been de-aired. I don't really need to pug. I don't need to sit there and wedge it. Yes, you could wedge it, and yes, that would make things easier. And I did have a couple mistakes further down the line that probably were due to those reasons. But for the most part, this is fine. Also, I take these pieces that I make and I do recycle them back out. So I'm just taking the clay and I put them back through uh, the recycle process, the reclaim process. I'm not firing these pieces off. Now, what I've done is I've gone ahead and cut out disc out of these uh, pug pugged cylinders basically they're pringles cans of clay that come out of the my pug mill and all all the the big thing that i want you guys to notice is notice how i'm centering on the wheel there i do the overhand uh kind of the the cross beam the t technique i don't know exactly if there's a name for it my professor in college just kind of was like this is how you bear down on the clay and you just make it and you move the uh the clay moves but you don't that was his thing so i was like cool um so let's call it the cross method where I'm putting one hand horizontally out and putting my other hand underneath it so I make like a cross with my hands. Um, that plus sign looking thing. And I'm basically form forcing the clay to fit into that space and that's how I'm centering. Now, uh, for me, I keep my elbows kind of into my thighs a little bit. Uh, you do really need to kind of work the shoulder muscles a little more. You want to stay as rigid as possible. Again, let the clay form to you. That is my best rule of thumb. Now, once I've sealed the clay to the bat head, I'm going to then uh, start at, um, start centering the clay out and then once it's centered out start going ahead and forming out the center hole now for the center hole on these donut pieces i am going all the way to the bat and it wasn't until about the fourth donut that i realized hey i need to make these smaller so the first couple were really wide so i have this like really stretched out donut um further along in the process they did come out a lot better and just so a little fyi don't make the center so wide you want to have it kind of narrow so it works a little better now, donuts are very simple shapes that you're forming. You're throwing a center, an interior cylinder, and you're throwing an outside cylinder as well. The space that you're using in the middle needs to stay hollow throughout the whole process. And as you're throwing, you want to kind of keep the walls about the same. Now, depending on which donut you're watching at this point, that changes. I was bringing the center cylinder up first and then bringing up the outside cylinder and then kind of crossing them once I kind of got them to the same elevated point. And it's it's really a rule of uh, just how does it look to you? How does the clay feel? Which is going to be easier to form together? Which is easier going to uh, to add those pieces together? That's Now, after throwing all of these cylinders, I was getting tired about number nine. 
uh, was when when things started going sideways for me. The the clay, I don't know. I think it was just a couple bad pieces where I should again, I should have wedged these out. The clay started tearing because there was harder spots of clay inside of it. Again, most of my clay is reclaimed clay. So once I hit a rough a rough patch, it it was kind of like hitting tire spikes on a highway at going at 80 miles an hour. All of a sudden you you are uh you're you're careening off of the highway there's no stopping it because once you hit those spots in your clay the clay starts to rip apart and that's just it's centrifugal force once those pieces come out to the surface a lot more it's just going to start tearing apart and there's no stopping it and there's no point in trying to save a project like that so most of those pieces i, I just kind of pulled straight off the wheel uh i did try and salvage if i could feel that it was kind of uh, a centering issue where the tops were a little bumpy. I'd use the pen tool to try and smooth it out a little bit if I could. Other than that, I really just kind of gave up on it and didn't bother. But as you saw, most of the time, all I'm using is the wooden rib and the, that's just to shape and to kind of bring in the bottoms a little bit more. So as I was cutting them off the wheel head, that it was just, it was a much cleaner cut and you could definitely see the tapering underneath of each of the donuts. Uh, so that had that nice rounded shape. Now, when I was building these up, I, I basically had in my mind of if I can spend half the time or less making all of the donuts, that gives me enough time to do the decoration aspect. And the decoration is where you really are hitting the pavement on, did you have a game plan ahead of time? And I will say, I had a plan going into this because like the night before, last night, I, w I wrote an... Uh, uh, a message on my phone of like these are the little points I need to remember I need to make some slip before I get in here uh, so that the slip is in the bottle so I have something ready to go I'm not sitting there making slip because that would just eat a lot of time out of that hour and that was pointless to me rolling out a slab I had a slab uh, I rolled out a slab at the right be right before I got started. I rolled out the slab first, so it's kind of had time to set up a little bit in my room. So it, as I'm cutting it out, that would give it a little better. So the, there's like little things that I had kind of pre-prepped that I could add into that hour. Those are just things that I took off. And then coming up with a theme. So the theme that I went with for the decoration aspect was Lucky Charms. Why? Because there's a bunch of shapes already there and they're really simple shapes and I can kind of knock those out of clay uh, to to build up the rest of the design and that's just what I did. So as we're watching me take this slab of clay and I'm making a bunch of clay balls that I'm cutting in half and I'm using pieces of those, of those roll-up pieces of clay and I'm just kind of flattening them out with my finger. It's just to create those shapes that I really need to run through real quick, such as the, the hearts or, um, the horseshoes, horseshoe elements, the balloons, which really came out bad. I, I was totally missed that, misjudged that one. I had no idea what I was doing. I just was like shapes. Let's add these things together. Uh, to then coming up with little twisting lines that I just would cut slices off of the of the slab and try and put down rashers of bacon across the tops of these pieces so that I had some sort of like piping icing element to them. Uh, and then again, using the, the, the slip itself, I wish that my slip wasn't as runny uh, in retrospect, just because as I'm squirting the slip on the top of it, it's just puddling right off of it. It wasn't thick enough to actually hold some sort of structure to it, which is that's what I was really hoping for. Uh, I I had it to that point and I thought it was too thick and I needed to thin it out so it'd come out of the bottle a little easier. And it did, it came out of the bottle just fine, uh, but it was too runny for what I needed it for. So doing this again, I would definitely try and get a paintbrush or get slip in another squeeze bottle. Maybe I need one of those giant ketchup bottles that you see at like a diner. Fill that up with slip. I think it'd probably work a lot better. Um, but let's go ahead and look at a couple of these donuts. All right, so we got the morning. This is usually like the maple donut. You got the little stripes on it. Take my fettling knife, just as we would if we were watching the pottery. I'm gonna check out the hole in the middle have that nice diameter you can definitely tell the wall is way thicker than it probably should be i would love to trim these down these things are super super heavy um but to to knock out 12 in an hour that's that's not too bad i'm not 100 percent on it i'm I, I definitely would like to have gone way thinner than that but you now for the design it looks really good uh, maybe i'll just cut more of a wavy pattern across it like so so now it looks a little more so now it looks like a little more like I've taken the bite out of the donut. That's all I wanted to see. Uh, this is this was a fun project. This was a lot of fun for me. Again, just you know, out making a bunch of really cool 
pieces of clay and and just coming up with something fun i thought that was a fun project okay so overall project as as it is fun project i love i love the kind of throwing the donuts getting back on the wheel getting my hands filthy again always a lot of fun for me uh but let's go ahead and you know and as always i'm hoping you guys are getting something fun and exciting out of these projects because you know i think learning about clay learning different stuff like this is a lot of fun there's a lot of good stuff but let's go ahead and wrap up class like we always do don't forget to like subscribe share on all the various platforms get the message out there to me teachers friends students that we possibly can educate the masses that's my goal uh if you guys had a question or comment or concern raise the hands in the comments below i have to answer those questions from my classmates other than that i will see you guys next class until then later guys don't do it don't do it no no i tossed this one on the board and i could already see the opening of where these two pieces didn't didn't join up at the top i actually open it up with my finger so you tell that it's all it's all hollow in the middle that which is definitely one of those good aspects of of the throwing got my channel on it's a british thing they have a whole it's between london and paris they call it the channel they call it the tube but it's a channel